Good afternoon, everyone. I must say on behalf of the Mandela Family Adventist Church, the pastor, Pastor Francis West, or youth pastor, Pastor Ivor O'Connor, the board of elders, we want to express our deepest condolences to the family of Sister Myers. We are hoping that in this time that God will give the comfort that you need and the peace that passes all understanding. If you should turn your program, we will have the opening hymn, Great is thy faithfulness. And we just ask you all to join here, Lord, the voices as we sing. To God's name, honor, and glory.
Please bow your heads as we seek the Lord in prayer. Most righteous, kind, and compassionate Father, we thank you for your amazing love. You are a God who never fails us. We thank you, Lord, for this lovely afternoon that we can come to celebrate the life of our dear sister. We pray, O oh God, that even now, the God who comfort and who cheers, that even now that you will dispatch angels, O oh God, to comfort the bereaving family. May you wrap, O oh God, your loving arms around them. May you assure them that in spite of losing their loved one, they can see your hand leading in their lives. We pray, place each and every person here today that even, O oh God, that at the word that will be spoken today, somewhere, somehow, it will speak to someone's heart and someone will even surrender their life to you. Keep your control of the president even now and let anything done to your name, your honor, and your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. We'll have the first lesson by Tracy Miller, followed by a musical item, Damian Eccleston, and then we'll have the second reading by Mark, by Malik Williams, in that order. Good afternoon, everyone. Could you please stand for the reading of God's own words? Our first lesson is taken from Job 14, reading from 1 to 10. And there I begin. A man that is born of a woman is a few days, full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fled also shadow and continue not. And do thou open thy eyes upon such and and bringeth me into judgment with thee. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. See, his days are determined. The number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his foes that he cannot pass. Turn from him that he may rest, till he shall accomplish as a hiring his days. For there is hope of a tree, if he be cut down, that it will sprout again and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof walks out in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet though the scent of water, it will bud and bring forth boats, like a plant, ten and last. But man died and wasted away, yea, man giveth give it up the boats, and here is he. Here is a portion of God's holy words and honor, I say, thanks be to God. It's always a sad occasion when we have to gather this way. But um, I'll say to the family that sometimes when our loved one has passed, you see the happy memories that we have, those are the things that will keep us. But sometimes your mind will go back to reflect on the person. You see those happy moments that we share then we'll have those to keep us cheered and it will help to ease the process of healing. So, I'll share this song with you. I remember, I remember Mama in a happy way. I remember Mama and the love that she gave Kneeling by her bedside I can still hear Mama say People are depending on you. Don't you let them down. I remember Mama in a happy way. Went to school with holes in her shoes. We didn't have much, but the Lord saw us. Mama kept the family 
how beautiful heaven must be. I would like to offer my condolences to the Lamb's family and reassure them that the pain that they are suffering now, they will never ever experience it again once they are, they are faithful to our Lord Jesus. He's going to prepare a place for us and he's assured us that which is overcome. It is the thing of the past. Heavenly Father, use me now to bring you a word, dear Father, to the waking congregation. I pray, Lord, that you be clear and concise. I pray, dear Father, that anyone hear my voice today will reconcile themselves to you in the fashion that you desire of them. Now we will give them no Lord Jesus. The words that I have on my heart this afternoon is taken from Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 to 15. And I can assure you that uh, as a little chap of mine, my mind, I will be keeping you long. Rest assured that I'm hoping that the Holy Spirit will use me in such a fashion that anyone here today that hear my voice will reconsider their position with the Lord. I'm going to use the Good News Bible to bring the reading to you. I find it very effective and very easy I think, on the Queen's English. And it reads, verse 14, Since the children, as he called them, are people of flesh and blood, Jesus himself became like them and shared their human nature. He did this so that through his death, he might destroy the devil who has the power over death. And in this way, set free those who were slaves all their lives because of their fear of death. And the reading of the Lord's Holy Word. Our lives, our journeys, with beginnings and destination. Many roads can be used to take this journey. There are two questions about this journey, however. One, do we know the way home? And the second one is, the other is, who is your companion? that you'll be taking on this journey with you. And now this sort of journey I'm talking about is a spiritual journey, one that I hope everyone here in my voice today will commit themselves to the Lord on a spiritual journey. If anyone here today is looking for a guide through which you can understand life, then look no further than Christ Jesus. There is no better person than Christ Jesus by which to understand life. Our lives are journeys with a beginning and a destination. The Apostle Paul, without question, is one of the greatest travel in the New Testament. He crosses the Mediterranean world, planting churches, on measuring the wayward and encouraging the weak. Individuals like myself use his writings in order to understand how to invest our time and our energies. 
a lot of us are challenged by what he has to say about our Christian journey. Let me say here and now that a Christian journey with Christ Jesus is the only way to travel. Paul the Apostle said in one of his letters, the one thing I do is to forget what is behind and then press forward toward this goal. Let us, brothers and sisters, once we repent, once we seek forgiveness of the Lord, let us never look back. Look forward. Seek a daily cleansing with Him and move on in a spirit, on your spiritual journey. Abraham was called by God to leave his homeland and to go to a land which he had never seen to form a nation. Before he could have heaven, he had to take that journey. Moses, on the other hand, had to journey to Pharaoh's palace to take God's people out of the Egyptian bondage. We are all reminded of several things when death strike close to us. Death is a gate that all of us must pass through. I repeat, gate, death is a gate that all of us must pass through. It may be expected or unexpected. But if you trust in Christ Jesus, this gate will be wide enough for two. I repeat, if we trust in our Lord Jesus, this gate is going to be wide enough for two of us. And that, I repeat and I emphasize, you will be one of them accompanied by your Lord Jesus, taking you through the gate. Jesus is one of who has led you all the way through life. will never go back on his promises. That is, never to leave you or to forsake you. So then, I have listed five points here. And one, the uncertainty of life and how short it is, is a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Death is a vapor for a little while and then vanishes. We may prolong it with good health practices, such as diet and exercise. Two, we should live every day as though it was our last. The greatest thing we can do is to prepare ourselves. Because at death, because at death, our spirit returns to our God, who gave it to us in the first place. So friends, prepare to meet your God. The signs of the times are telling us. We don't have to look far around us. The things of the past that used to happen to your friends and your next door neighbor is now happening to us. It is in our, in our own yard. It's not with anyone else. So let us be careful and seek a relationship with God. When that strikes close to us, we see more clearly the futility of earthly things. Worshipping God, friends, will bring us joy, happiness, and peace. These are far too valuable to be neglected or to be lost while rushing after material things of this world, which at best lasts us only a short while. The fourth one is 
it is appointed unto us once to die. So death is a common occurrence to all of us. Let me remind you, it is appointed unto us to die. It's an occurrence to all of us. That is why we should keep this thought not far from our minds. And the fifth one is, when death strikes near to us, it is then we see how much we really need Christ Jesus. We need him to save us from our sins, to lead us safely through life, to comfort and give us strength when we must walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Jesus, my waiting friends in the congregation, Jesus is the answer. Let us be comforted in this thought. Jesus is the answer to all our trials and suffering. He is the answer to comfort us. Let us all strive to overcome the second death. By accepting Jesus into our lives, he will certainly give us the victory over death. Sometimes life is cut short, unexpectedly, because of the gunman or the tragedy of disease. Sometimes our life lasts a normal 65 to 70 years, sometimes a little longer. But every life comes to an end eventually. So let us be mindful. Let us prepare. We can, you see, we can go on living and then expect forgiveness in the, in the form that. Well, let me let me back up and say that's the reason why Jesus, you know, has happened to be informed. No one, not even his disciples, when he's going to return. For we have to be ready, prepared to meet him. Because if we knew when he was going to come, even up to this minute, we could be even thinking in, in our own minds unpleasant things and then get ourselves ready in the next hour. But life is not like that. We have to be ready, prepared to live a life journey that is pleasing to our God. Because of the shooting and the cancer in our society, for example, that is no longer something that happens to someone else. We all get involved somehow. It doesn't happen to your neighbor anymore. It happens to us now. I'll just tell you this. I read recently and this is what I would like you all to take on board as well. I read about a teenager who was critically injured in a car accident. In her dying moments, let me tell you what she said to her mother. Mom, she said, you taught me everything to get through college. You taught me how to party. You taught me how to drink. But you never taught me how to die. Now, will you teach me fast now? Because, Mom, I am dying. And that was her last words to her mother. Being involved in a car crash. And I'm going to read it again. Because as parents, we have a responsibility to live out a life, let our life windows shine and reflect God, because it's important. 
And I want everyone to hear my voice today with your eyes and make it right with you. And I'm going to read again. She said, Mom, you taught me everything to get through college. You taught me how to party. You taught me how to drink. But you never taught me how to die. Now, she said, as the breath of life leaving her, she said, will you teach me fast? Because mom, I am dying. Sunburns, sunburns. I'm here to tell you that the Holy Bible does teach us how to live and to die. We can all search the scriptures and we'll find these assurances. So, as I'm about to close, because I told you I'm a little chap and I don't keep you waiting long. May we be blessed with the benefits of our Lord Jesus' death and resurrection. Let us look with faith to the day when our Lord Jesus returns, so that we will enjoy the fullness of his promises. Merciful Father, hear our prayers and comfort those who mourn. Please, Lord, hear our prayers and comfort those who mourn. Renew our faith in your Son, Lord Jesus, who was raised from the death. Strengthen our faith so that we will share in our Lord's resurrection. Amen. Amen. Here at Mandibu we have a vibrant community outreach service where we feed the homeless at time we hand out clothing items to those that are in need. And as customary at a federal service, we will lift an offering. There's a blue Suzuki Swift car, I think the windows. Of the window is down, so you can attend it before the rain starts. <clears throat> so we operate a vibrant community service, and an offer will be lifted today that will go to help the less fortunate in our community. Let us pray. Holy Father, we know that all good and perfect gifts come from you. You have blessed us abundantly. You have kept us safe. And through your love and your grace and your mercy, we come to thee. And as we give back a part of what you have blessed us with, we pray over that it will go to alleviate the suffering and pain as the less fortunate of our families. May you bless us even now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
we'll have three chickens. The first one will be done by Shannon Beans, followed by Sonia, Marvan, and then the lady. In that order, please.
you mean it more? Before I do this lecture, I would like to say something about Ms. Myers. I grew up to know Ms. Myers as a kind, loving, caring person. A person who never feel like to say no. And whenever time I came from school, I would run over there because my aunt was working for the Myers family. And there was a lots of food tree and a swing song in the yard. I would run me and my cousin to see who first would go there. And whenever time Ms. Myers come from work, she didn't flounce to see anyone I was there. And whenever time she did things for her children, she always shared. It is a black kiss copper. When more than one, she put one in two, and if it's two of us, we get one each. When dinner time, the same thing happened. My aunt worked with them until she deceased. Charmin grew up to be the same like her mother, caring, loving, and kind. Whenever time things go wrong, Miss B would call and say, Sonia, oh, you're sad, so. You're sad, you know, girl, you're really sad. My aunt passed on, they were there for her. My grandmother passed on, they were there. My father passed on, they were there. My daughter passed on, she died over 2013 accident, they were there. My father passed on, they were also there. And even my mother, October last year, passed on, they were there for her. And when I heard that Miss Myers was sick, I went and looked for her. And as I reached the door here, she, I said, Charmian, she said, Sonia. And when I reached inside, she said, wake up and look up and see me. And she said, Sonia, hi. And I was there talking until I have to leave. When I heard that she passed on, you know, you know, that is no respect of course. And they say it was really frightening when time it happened. But when my sister called me and said, it happened, I said, you two lie. Who says so? She said, yes, she passed after one. And today, Miss Myers is no more here with us to hear me sing for her. But Charmin, this song is for you. You made your storm Seems like forever The night of confusion Has been so long Your ship lost those 
Good afternoon. Elders on the platform, your family, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It is not often that you hear people who say they take pleasure in saying something at a funeral. But I do take pleasure in giving tribute to Ellen Beatrice Mines. Miss Beatrice is an affectionate you know has been a friend of my family for all my life. And her siblings, Shannon and Tony, who predeceased her, and my lovely friend, the husband. We have all been riding out the storm, as so we have said, together. And I can tell you that we have lost a mark in Beatrice Miles. She was a woman of virtue, principle, love. Her whole family were, I can remember, their dad before the highway they went to was a one little spot on a Sunday in the world to go and you find some food going on there. Plums, tangerine, oranges, mangoes, you name it. And those people were genuine, I can tell you. So, Miss B has lived a good life. And at 90, I'm going to tell me that's good to go. It's good battle. Shannon, take heart, my dear. Life goes on. And I'm sure your mother will want to hear us speak of her in this glorious way, and we are all happy together. So let's keep this Thanksgiving service bright, warm, and happy. My condolences to you. May her soul rest. We now have the eulogy by Marianne Eccleston. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> to everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Eulogy for the late Helen Beatrice Myers, affectionately called Miss B. Miss B was born in Brooklyn, New York, to parents Rudolph and Beatrice Jarity Myers on the 27th of August, 1932. She was an only child and given over by doctors to live only for a few hours. Her mother was very worried, but she survived and was looked upon as a special gift from God. Her parents named her Helen Beatrice, meaning bright and bringing joy. Miss B came to Jamaica at the early age of three and a half years old to live with her grand aunts and their parents. At the age of six, she attended the Mount St. Joseph Preparatory, then Manchester High School, and then Mount St. Joseph Commercial School. After leaving Mount St. Joseph Commercial School, she wanted to become a nurse. But knowing the type of caring person she was, all her desire was to make life better for the family that took care of her. So she got a job at Alcan Jamaica, where she worked as an executive secretary for 15 years. After which, she worked at Al Alpart for a short while, and then at different lawyer offices, such as McFarlane, Swaby, and Crosby. She also worked at Raymar's Furniture Store before she retired. Her words to anyone was, knowledge is power. Miss B did not return to her native land, however, she stayed and worked to the best of her ability and took care of her family of seven until she buried them. Her grand aunt's husband was the only one left, so at the age of 36, Miss B decided that life was getting so lonely, and so she had two children, Charmaine and Anthony. 
Her children's father, along with her uncle-in-law, predeceased her. Eventually, her son Anthony also predeceased her six years ago. Miss B is an extraordinary woman, and so God gave her the strength to care for many more on the outside. She took care of five individuals in her home and cared for them until they passed. I can only say, God broke our hearts to prove to us that he takes only the best. She leaves to mourn her daughter, Charmaine, her granddaughter, Helena, her son-in-law, Anthony, her cousin, Sonia, and a whole host of friends. May her soul rest in peace. Does Jesus care when you say goodbye to the dearest one on earth and your sad heart aches till it nearly breaks? Does Jesus care? Oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with your grief. When the days are weary, the long nights chill, I know that Jesus cares. O oh, righteous, kind and compassionate Father, we thank you that you are a caring God, a one who sympathizes when we grieve. You promise, O oh God, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Even when our hearts are troubled, you promise to be there for us. And this afternoon, mighty God, the family members, the friends are mourning because they lost of your loved one. We know about that death has passed upon all mankind and today it has snatched a loved one away. Heavenly Father, we pray even now that you will comfort the family members as only heaven can. May they find a shoulder to lean on. May you, O oh God, even now send your Holy Spirit to be by their side, to give them the assurance that you will never leave them nor forsake them. Let them realize, O oh God, that death will someday too will be conquered when you shall burst the eastern sky to reunite loved ones with each other. We long for that day, Heavenly Father, when you shall put in your appearance to take us home to be with you forever. You will promise there will be no more sickness, no more pain, no more suffering, no more parting. And we can rest assured, God, that your promises are true and we just need to trust you. But until then, O oh God, our hearts will go on singing. Until then, with joy, we'll carry on. Until that day, when our eyes Behold that city, until then we will call 
us go. Help us to be faithful. Help us to be true. That when the trumpet shall sound, those that have died in Christ and those that have been waiting for his return, who have so lived a Christ like life, will be caught up to meet to the big cloud. Will they never part again? Until then, keep us faithful, keep us true. In Jesus' mighty name, my prayer. You may be seated. We will stand as we sing the hymn. Our cheering is a Christian hope. At the singing of the second stanza, the platform part will be out, followed by the family members. Then the church will follow after. Our cheering is the Christian.
we have to move, we have to proceed. We have to move. No, 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 no. Look at him. All right. Auntie J. Ready? Hey! Okay. 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 So um orderly, let's just behave in that manner. Today we are gathered together at the grey side of Ellen Myers to pay our last favour. On behalf of the family of Ellen, I would like to thank you all for coming. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor West, and his church family, I offer our condolences. That remind us that we live in a fallen world, in perfect world, brought about by one man, Adam Bruce. However, one of the most clearly thought doctrines in scripture is that of the resurrection. Jesus made it possible for everyone who believed in him and accepted him they too will be raised from the dead. The gospel writer Paul wrote for our citizenship is in heaven, for which we also eagerly await for our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our body into the Lord of God, and will be made to the answer to the glory of God. Scripture also says that the Lord himself will descend into heaven, and will carry Christ to rise and let those who are left alive and remain faithful shall be caught together. To be our Lord Jesus in the air 
Yes, yes, yes.